Well, the bellows have had uh, a good long time, almost 24 hours to for that glue to set up. I think that'll be long enough. And now what I'll do is I will take some matte black paint and those exposed edges that you see around in here, I'll make sure that they're all given a generous coating of matte black paint to stop any reflections. Okay, a little bit of paint. You don't need to be any great artist to get this paint in place. All it has to do is add some non-reflective capabilities to the surfaces. Try not to get it all over the bellows because it'll certainly be handy at sticking things together of course this is the second time I've done this on this particular camera because when it came here for servicing earlier this year I could see that the bellows had been glued in place by someone but they hadn't bothered to do this. Well that looks fine to me, that'll do well. So I'll just go and uh, clean my paintbrush and carry on working. I'll get these bellows struts back in place now. Looks fine. Something doesn't want to drop into place properly. What's that propped up on? Let's see if I can get the two in the film cassette chamber in place. No, doesn't want it to go. Just slacken that screw off and manipulate these struts a bit, I think. What if I collapse that? Will that frame fit in nicely then? Yeah, that's a bit better. Just going to make sure I get the uh, pretty screws in the cassette well where they're to be seen.
and one of them's a bit scarred and ugly looking and that goes in under the lever at the base of the camera. Oh, yes, that uh, base is a bit distorted there that it's screwing into. That's why it's a bit reluctant to go in. That's nice. That ex extends correctly. Tighten up these two screws. That's our struts in position. I'll just get the focus mount mounted on the front here, on the lens standard. Well, I've collapsed the front. I should be able to screw up the, put these four screws in that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Hopefully they will line up. Check those four screws that hold the focus mount to the front standard. That's all good. Now if I extend the front, we should extend the bellows. Here we do have it. So that part's done. The bellows are not pulling away from the body or anything awful. That looks good. What can I do now? I think I can fit the, the, uh, the door back on the front now. Of course this one has got quite a strong return spring. Later retinas didn't have a spring there. I'll get this swung into position. And I'll use my rule to Tuck that spring down into the body. That's better. And get my hinge pin screws in position. That's the one at the top. I've got to push against the action of that spring here, so it's, it can be awkward getting this screw hole lined up. That looks good. And the front opens and shuts. Focus scale ring. 
well fortunately our mount is all marked for the position of this There's the fourth screw. I was wondering where that had got to. I couldn't see it in the box there. Making sure my alignment marks are aligned. Focus is smooth. shutter on last of all I think it's just completely film advance mechanism components at the top which I'd had to remove so I could get to that screw holding the struts mechanism in place That's good. Now, to assemble the frame counter component. That's better. And the frame counter disc itself, which I've got to pull one of those little levers back out of the way of this as I get this on here. That one. See the frame counter advances correctly there. The top cover can go back on. There's a single chrome plated screw. It holds the top cover in place. And looking at the one that's here, that was probably not the original screw. It certainly does the job well enough. Wait a minute. We have it here. And I know where that screw came from because I was looking for that for another job. It's okay, this is the one we want. That's better. The advance knob can go off, and I need the spanner for that. I'll put the spanner in on the flats on the top of the film advance shaft, and just do that knob up tight with my fingers. Just checking that as I roll the sprocket shaft with my thumb and advance the, turn the film advance knob that the film advance locked correctly 
and that the frame counter advances by one position with each movement of the lever at the back. The base of the camera, we want our leather back on there, so I'd better find the adhesive. Alright, put some adhesive on there and spread it out carefully. Making sure I get cover right to the edges. That's good. And now something that's a useful trick is to stop this from sticking to the release button for the front door. I just gave that a quick wipe with grease around that hole so that the glue won't stick to the button. Here's the leather in place. Now I've just got to make sure it's seated correctly. And leather usually shrinks back so it doesn't want to seat around raised bosses like that tripod socket. So I'll just push that down there, make sure that's good. Make sure it's moulded down here, press down around that button. Remove any excess glue on the surface, that looks quite good. And I can put the depth of field calculator disc back in place. I don't have to put any grease on this because it still has all the grease that was put on here earlier this year. So those two screws And that's just the depth of field calculator that on later cameras we um, would expect to find on the focus scale itself. Seems a little bit stiff. Uh, perhaps that spring's got more action than I would expect or it's not seating correctly. I'll investigate that. The spring, I'd say, judging by the tension I'm feeling there. Let's just take this central section out. Check that that spring is seated. And it certainly is. That's better. Yeah, that's much, much better. That's much freer. That works well. So, not much more to go with this particular task now, except to put the shutter back. Before I do that, I'm going to use a torch, a flashlight, and see, make sure that I can see absolutely no sign of any light leaks. That looks absolutely fine. Now there's no key or pin to position the shutter on one of these cameras. You have to position it correctly and it's held by the friction Friction only, really. Now I note that the shutter retainer ring here is somewhat scarred and tired. But 
to make the saw look a little bit rougher before I ever reach 80. See if I can get this thing started. Yeah, I might have to see if I can uh, clean this up a bit. It's it's a bit stretched out of shape at this point here. Getting this so that it will engage the tool correctly and still run on that thread is the challenge. So I'll just see if I can get these these two slots where it engages the tool, they're a bit misshapen. Well, one of them is quite misshapen. I'll see if I can push that back into shape. Brass is quite soft and this is quite thin, of course. Well, that moved a long way. That was quite good. Okay, well that'll certainly have no trouble engaging the tool. Because it was sort of stretched at the point where those two notches were, they would have rubbed on the focus mount. Let's get this vaguely in the right position. before I get ready to tighten it completely. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the infinity marks align correctly with the pointers on the shutter. This has two focus scales, one for portrait and one for uh, landscape mode. This need, that shutter needs to be round a bit further. I'll start it there because it'll want to shift anyway as I apply pressure with the tool. This is something that, this particular task is something you sometimes have to uh, do once or twice in order to get things seated where you want them. That a little bit more I think wouldn't hurt. And what I need to do is check that when you go to set the 500th speed, which is where you're applying the most pressure on the shutter when you cock it, make sure that the shutter does not move on the body at all. And that's fine. That's working fine. And unusual, well, fairly unusually, the shutter release on this, the plunger, works very, very well. The plungers are often do not work very, very well. The design of the, them is they have a, a little ball on the end of the shaft which bears on a lever down in here which releases the shutter. And the ball over time gets misshapen, it wears, and effect effectively it ends up with a flat on it. And so it doesn't um, roll across the lever as it first was intended to do. So over time you often find that the shutter releases get sticky or fail to return again. This is good. Um, a good example. So there we have it. That's a Retina 1 type 126 which was the last of the Retina 1s that 
that didn't have a release for the shutter on the body itself, only on the shutter. And this was the chromed version. The, they also made a version with black lacquer finish instead. That was the Type 119. Otherwise they were much the same. Right. I'll be pleased to get this camera back to its owner and I'm sure he'll be pleased to have it back and get some photos without great light leaks. Thanks for watching.